Hi everybody, welcome to Free Motion Fridays with Kate Quinn. And today we're gonna work with stencils and pounce and teach you some ideas how you can transfer designs and how you can learn designs that are more complex than you maybe think that you can make. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first set of tools that I'm gonna show you is we're gonna need some pounce eventually, and we're gonna start with paper and pencil. Let me grab my design real quick. I actually have several different designs, but one of the most complicated, we're gonna just start with that. Hi, Barbara Robison. All right, let's get our palm mess up so we can chat. Okay, here we go. So the one we're gonna start with might look a little bit intimidating. I'm not gonna lie, it does kind of look, look like that. This is the design. Isn't that cool? Hi, man, how are you? It's good to have you here. So these are quite common, this kind of like a plastic stencil, it's fairly flexible, and it generally has some kind of design on it. A lot of the times it may be a border or a fill. And I want to show you some information that can be really, really helpful. If you look on this little tag, you get information about the scale of the design. So this one is either 10 centimeters or four inches, and that's this dimension right here. This is the border piece right here, and this is the width. So this would fit really well in a four inch border. And then here, there is a corner section. And the design is actually a little bit different here in this area because it is turning the corner. So they're changing the direction for you. So this would allow you to make a nice long border and you can just repeat the sections as many times as you wanted to. And if I was gonna do this for a really long, long border and I wasn't sure how it would fit, I would section off a piece of paper and I would trace this and I would fold the border into sections and I would create a connection between the pieces. So let's go ahead and show you the very first thing I would want you to do if, if you're gonna be practicing this. Actually draw it out. So. I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit so we can scoot over. This design has a path that it goes. And in order to, for me to sew it, I need to know what that is before I start sewing it, right? So let's think about it. This is our start point right here. And typically on one of these little icons, it'll actually tell you like, there's your little start dot right there. And that's where you would begin. And then you can use these as references in order to practice it. I would practice it several, several times before I stitched it out. I would just draw it and then I would just repeat over it. And I want you to think about what we're doing in terms of where we're starting and stopping. So this line right here connects up to here. So this point right there is a good stop point. So from here to that point, I would come up and around and I would stop. And this would be sort of that breathing space right here. Then the next segment is going to be curving around and all the way to this loop and stopping there. Because this movement can be done all at once, nice and smoothly without any starts and stops. So think about it this way, here, curving. This is a, almost like a circle. So we wouldn't stop there. We would just keep going around and there is where we would stop, right at this little connector right there because this is where you're changing directions. So then we'll do the next one all the way here until we're changing directions, which would be right there. Let's see if we can get you in a little bit closer so you could see better. I don't want my hand to be in the way. Can you see that there's blue chalk on there? <laughs> So now we've come around here and we're stopped. And again, this is a position where there's a change. It's going that way towards the back. So I'll scoot it forward a little bit. Right from this section, this line connects into this loop right here. So we'll make the loop and we'll come back down. 
And this is actually going to come out to this section. Doesn't show on this, but I know that from this position, I'm going to make this loop all the way around and he would come back around to here. So I'll just fake this right here. I can draw it in later if I want to. Now, this next little section is the next piece, right? So I can think about where does this connect? For me, I want to go around the heart and then back to the top and travel through the center. So I'm trying to make this center sort of hit this little spot right there. Okay, here's the next unit right there. This will all be done as one because this is a little loop-de-loop -loop, and right down to the bottom where it changes directions. So that's the stop part for this section of the design and then we're gonna move up to the next section. This one cuts right through the middle and you do one side of the heart and you cross over and then this guy is gonna come all the way down, all the way around. This whole loop would all be done as one section right there, right? Swing, down, loop, and stop right there. And this is the next change of direction right here. From this section right here, now we're gonna make this inner loop, right? And then I'll bring us all the way down, all the way down to this point. And then we can do the next section, which is this piece right here. This seems like it maybe goes a little bit um, slow in terms of the teaching, but when you're sewing, you'll be able to do this basically with breaths. So I think of this as one breath. Here I just go, whoo, and then loop, and then the next loop, and then the next loop, and then you'll go right into the next section. So each one of those becomes sort of a little rhythm that gets you breathing. And then here's the little loop-de-loop -loop right here. So I want you to think about this design as taking it apart into sections where you would have an obvious change of direction. That is a really important training tool because being able to stop and change directions is very important when you're free motioning. So this is a training tool that's getting us there. And if we practice this on paper a bunch of times before we sew it, then we don't really have to think as hard because we know where those changes are. So just for now, I'll just pull this off and you can see that we've got our partial design right there. And you could go ahead and trace over that a bunch of times. That would help you close in the lines. If you needed references, you could put little arrows in there. This is a practice piece that you could also stitch through and make a template if you wanted to. But you know, you already have a stencil. There's not really a need to do that unless you would wanna rescale it. If this is four inches wide, but we need it to be wider, we could take this onto our copier and we could make it wider by enlarging the design and then we could stitch through it and create the holes. And that way you're scaling that to match up with the quilt that you need to. If your actual stencil right here is not the right size, that would be a way you could create a new stencil that does fit the size that you want. Okay, let me show you one more technique. Okay, so what I did here is I've actually marked the stencil on there, and this is, I haven't enlarged this, but this would be an example of how you could mark that enlargening and you could make this the full length of your border. And what this is, is freezer paper. So it's going to stay on there. And what I would do is the first time that I sewed it in order to make the new stencil, let's go ahead and pull the thread out, right? And now we can start with our design. And again, we want to practice, you know, which direction are we going? This one is going to have the heart coming through and then the loop-de-loop. -loop. And by doing it on this paper, now we're creating this. Um, so somebody asked, do I use stencils often to create my border design? I would not say often, but rulers can't necessarily give you the complexity of a design like this. So if I want a design that is more intricate and more complex like this, 
then stencils are a really good way to get that. And so I never try to take a tool out of my toolbox if I think it might have some value and some use. Okay, so let's go ahead and here what we would be doing is we're actually going to just make the stencil by stitching. And the thing that is nice about this is if we make a mistake, we can sort of correct it. So we can also decide if there's a path that we want that's better for us. Plus, it's good training. It's good training for moving the fabric and actually stitching through the design. So here, we're going to come up right through the center of the heart and do the loop-de-loop. -loop. And this will also show you that sort of breathing pattern that we talked about. So here, put my loop in. Here's my next loop all at once. And there is the stop for the change of direction. Then as I look at the next piece, I can think about where am I going? I'm going to come up and stop. And then this part all the way down to the bottom and through the loop is the next one. So let's do this one. We'll come right up here to sort of follow that. And remember, you're in charge, okay? You can change this design at any time if you want to. You don't have to make everything so perfect. So there's your loop right there, go around. I'm moving the fabric. I'm getting the sensation of the design. And this one I'll come all the way back to the connecting line right here so that I can move into this next portion. I'll do this part and then coming back around. So I'm going to do my little loop and over the top. So thinking about the pathway is going to be very important for us to get the look that we want so we can practice it for later. So come around the top and then stop. Now this little heart is the one where we want to go over the top and down to the bottom and through. So make sure that we're following the pathway that we've decided on. Going around, nice and smooth, coming back to the bottom and sewing right through the top. And there's your little loop-de-loop. -loop. One, two, once you get to that next position, this is one stop to the change of direction. And then here is the one that goes all the way around and does this top loop. So let's go ahead, curve around, down to the bottom, and all the way around. What's nice with the freezer paper is I can't really show, um, I can't really sew this if it was just paper. If I took this off and I'm just trying to sew this design, number one, it doesn't have the feel. You're not getting the same friction that you would get on your sewing machine if it's just this paper and if it was tacky underneath like this because it's waxy, then it actually wouldn't stay in place. So by putting this on just even a scrap, you don't, it doesn't have to be an actual quilt piece. It's just a layered piece of batting that's scrappy. I get the same feel of motion that I would when I'm sewing, and then I get a more natural response and movement of all of this as I'm moving together. This is more what I would actually feel if I'm sewing. So this helps me make this template pattern just as if I were actually sewing it, and then I also get that practice. So this is the one we're gonna do the inside loop right here. So we'll kind of swing around. Oh, I think I did it wrong. That's okay, we'll just fix it. Just go around. So I'll, I know that that's a little problem child, so I'm gonna watch for that next time. Do the heart all the way on the outside, connect it on the bottom, and come through the top to do your little loop-de-loop. -loop. And then there's your stop into the next one. and all the way around this one, all the way around the loop. So I'm not using a stitch regulator, but you can hear that the rhythm of my machine is very, very even, right? So that is me controlling my stitch length. You can use that sound of your machine to really help you know that you're even, that you're gonna make your design nice and even. It's not that I can't go faster, I absolutely can, but the sound of my machine is how I control what my stitch length is gonna look like. Rest it on top of the needle threader. Let me see what that comment is. Hang on just a second.
So right now I have unthreaded my machine. There, there is a question, D said, um, can you bring the thread through the tension disc and then not thread the needle? I could do that, but I don't want any pieces uh, randomly stuck in the machine that are not going the way that they should be. I actually have the thread all the way pulled out. You're not really saving anything in terms of time. I don't think that saves you anything in terms of it's gonna take you 10 seconds to thread it you know, later. I mean, if you've threaded the machine a thousand times, you might have done it a million. So I don't think it's worth having that loose thread just inside the machine, D, if that is the question. So hopefully I'm answering that correct correctly. Um, let's see, maybe I didn't answer that correctly. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so I guess the question is, how can I sew without thread? I see. So if you have a sensor on your machine and the machine, it doesn't like that you have no thread in there, is that is the question I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm getting it now. So 99% of those machines that have a sensor like that, um, you can turn that sensor off. On my machine, I can turn that sensor off. I have to go into the settings and I have to turn the little recognize the bobbin, recognize the thread, and I can turn that sensor off. Um, so that will be an answer for Nan too, because she has my same machine. And I can send, um, Nan, if you can't figure that out, I can try to set up um, some little pictures to show you the screen where you can go in and turn that sensor off so you can continue to sew, because you can do that, absolutely, for sure. Okay, good. Whoa, sorry. Sometimes when I'm following along after the fact, I lose track of what I'm doing and then I don't know what to tell people. So hopefully we answered that correctly. But so far, what do you think? Does that look good? Does that look, you know, would you be comfortable if you had these little loop-de-loops on here? Does that look pristine enough for your perfection quotient? So again, the training tool that we're doing here, this is helping us practice. And if I was doing this on a longer border, I could determine what my repeat section would be and fold this paper in half, and I could sew more than one of them. And then if I needed to connect it, because maybe it didn't fit perfectly, I could elongate a few. Like if I needed this to be a quarter inch bigger, I could just make a little dot um, that I need this line to come down a little further and then I could make my little loop. So you could fudge that by adding just a little bit of length for each one of these. I mean, by the time you add maybe one eighth or a little bit bigger than one eighth to each one of these pattern references, you could elongate this very much imperceptibly and then you could fill it in your border if you needed it to be um, just a little bit bigger or you can cut off little pieces of it and being able to make that adjustment on the templated paper is something then that allows you to literally iron this on to your border and make the adjustment right before you sew it you could actually make the adjustment in terms of pencil and then you could stitch the whole thing out as a template and then put it on your quilt and it would match perfectly so Understand that there's lots of different ways that we can use the stencil. We don't just have to put it on there and swipe it and that's it, we're stuck with it. We can make as many adjustments to it as we want. For example, if I didn't like this little loop-de-loop -loop, cause it was like, I don't know, whatever, it just bothered me. I can just say, okay, I'm just gonna swirl over to this side and cut that whole little thing off because I don't like it. So know that you have a lot of flexibility but the key thing that I want to share in this class today is definitely practice your path and think about sort of the reference breathing that you want to have so that, for example, if I'm going around and I'm making this design, I don't want to stop right there. Okay, if I stop in the middle of this longer arc, that's when you start to get kind of what I call like the wonky thing. You want to find that natural place where you're going to change directions so that you can keep the arcing smooth and make it look how you want it instead of having some kind of weird thing happening right where you don't want it. So I think that with this design, it's kind of complicated. I'm not sure that I would have ever felt comfortable just sewing this by myself, 
But now that I've practiced it a bunch of times on here, and I feel like I can, you know, know the path, I know where I'm going, I'm gonna do my little loop. Well, I feel a lot more confident that I could actually sew this out and make it look reasonably good on the quilt and I wouldn't feel bad about, you know, how it would look. I would feel comfortable that I could make this into something that would look pretty. Now, let me show you something really quickly right here. See if we can get in there a little bit more so you can see. This is not the natural path that we had on the rest of our design. And why is that? This is the corner. So because this is now changing our path, we need to think about what, um, how do we get around this? How do we navigate this path and get sort of back onto our path? So actually right here in this corner, I'm not sure. This part connects to right here. So it means that we need to do this part first. So I would want to come from here and do this part of the loop, which would bring me back. Okay, so let's do that part first. And this kind of mimics that little heart echo that we did before. And we'll come around and we'll go that way. I better look, I'm gonna turn it a little bit so I can see how it connects up. So it's gonna connect right back along the existing design, right to that center. And then we wanna come this way. And here's the loop. And then this is gonna come up around this way. So let me show you this direction. Oh, we're a little bit off the camera. Let me adjust that. Let's make sure we can see it better. I'm gonna go back out just a little bit so we're not so crunched up. So at this point, as we come around, we wanna make sure we come on this side because this is gonna arc back over. So this part right here, as we come back over the top, if we went the opposite way, I don't think it would be as smooth, right? This is gonna let us come into the point and then just arc right back over the top and come around. So notice that when we have sort of those little changes where the design needs to make an adjustment because it's going somewhere else, what they had to do is sort of crunch up the corner a little bit so that now you can continue going this way. Um, okay, so I, let's see, I think we can probably stop. One of the things about doing it with no thread like this is I can stop wherever I want. <laughs> so, but looks, I think it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and pounce over this now and let's see how we did. Pounce is such a great tool. The chalk that I'm using in mine is the Ultimate Pounce, which is their iron off uh, product. So this is heat sensitive. I can use um, steam or dry iron, and it will also wash off. That's another important thing. You can wash it off, you know, if you wash the quilt and there's residual chalk, it should come off. So this is very messy, actually. I think the chalk is super messy. So I usually double bag mine. This one isn't open yet. This um, interior one right here is not even open right there. But you can see it's, it's very messy. So de definitely keep it double bagged. And then when you're ready to use it, just open up a little tiny bit right there. And you can make sure you're working in an area where it's got a little bit of protection or that's easy to clean up because this tends to get everywhere. I won't lie, it does, it gets everywhere. <laughs> but I don't care, I like it. It works great. Okay, then when you put it in here, there's a little basin right here, and I'll just pull this up. You're just gonna fill that with chalk right there. You can see that mine, that is the actual uh, transfer pad right there, so mine is pretty much empty. <laughs> so I better put some more in there. Then just close that up, make sure that's all the way closed. That helps keep the chalk from you know going anywhere. The whole pounce part of this is not about going like this on the quilt, it's about going like this. You need to bang this when it is closed about 50 to 60 times when you first get it in order to transfer the chalk into the felt pad right there. Okay, that's where the chalk is gonna come out. And you'll know that it's working once you have chalk in the basin. You should be able to kind of like tap the bottom and see that there's a little chalk collecting down in the bottom like that. Okay, so let me pounce mine. Not on the quilt, right? Then once you get to the quilt, what you're doing is you're swiping, right? 
So you can kind of rub in a little bit. You can do little circles. What that does is make sure that that chalk gets into those holes. And the other thing about having this um, ironed onto this is it prevents chalk maybe from spreading and getting into areas where we don't want it to get into. So I'm just gonna lift this up. This is my transfer line. Look how awesome that is. Doesn't that look great? And you can see how it's gonna quilt up too. So this is just one tool that's in your quilting arsenal and I wouldn't be without it. I actually use it for so many different things, but it's really, really valuable. And I'm gonna just show you one other thing. I have lots of stencils. I actually have quite a few. This one is a border right here. But let's say I, I don't think this border is gonna fit mine, right, the way I want it. I don't need the whole border. I can just take one little piece. I can just take this, transfer this onto a piece of paper, scale it to the size that I wanna scale it, and then I don't need to worry about all of the rest of this. I can just have this piece right here, and that's it, right? So let's go ahead and um, put this over here. We'll just use a different section, and we'll actually sew this one out. We sewed the other one, kind of, right? We did it, kind of. So I can just put this on a piece of paper and make sure it's the size that I want. If it's already the size that I want, I can use some reference lines on the quilt and I can just mark these lines and I can center the design. This one even has like a perfect center line right there. And I could use that to put the design right where I wanted to. And I don't need to necessarily worry about all of these other parts. So for this design, the way that I think would be practical to sew it is to come from the bottom and maybe do this first one and back to the top. Uh, let's see, I don't know, maybe I'll go this way. I like to go from top to bottom, so I'll actually backtrack up to the top. Let's do that. Okay, we've gotta get threaded, right? Can't do anything without threading. All right, gotta show you some sewing, right? Can't be a free motion class if we don't sew. We kind of sewed, but we sewed with no thread. All right, so let me get threaded up. So I wanna show you, my foot is down right now because my machine requires me to put my machine in threading mode. I'm gonna press a button, and this is now out of threading mode. And if I press this button, it makes the foot go down. This machine has its own path. You need to follow the directions for your own machine. Most standard machines, what you want is the foot to be in the up position when you're threading. So that's very, very important to make sure that you're doing it properly. And then I'm just gonna put my thread through the hole. Okay, you saw that I did my little needle down and up and I can just pull this and that will bring my thread through the foot. Once I have this like this, I'm gonna put my foot down and I want you to try to pull on your thread. If I try this and my thread is like ridiculously tight, that is a good sign that maybe your thread tension is a little too tight and you want to lower it down. It should move, but it should give you some resistance, right? And I can tell that maybe mine is a little too much resistance, so I'm gonna just lower mine down so I can pull it more easily. This to me is a pretensioner. By using this technique, I can readily determine, am I threaded correctly? Because if I have no tension, then it's definitely not threaded properly. And then if I pull on it and I feel like it's too tight, then I can lower it down. And if it's really loose, I can tighten it up right away. And that's gonna get me closer to my test. Um, I thought it would mess up if you went across it more than once. So Betty, that is a good question. Betty's comment was, if I'm rubbing the chalk and I go back and forth like that, uh, I would tell you that if I am doing that, perhaps on this, I might have a little bit more echo because our freezer paper was ironed down to the fabric, it's actually sticking on the fabric all over, except where the holes were that we made. 
But I will tell you that I definitely rub it, especially to get into like little corners or areas where when you're swiping, you miss the, the edges. So I definitely take my little chalk and I can just go in there with little circles and then just go over it a little bit more. And you'll see that it will do it. It will give you a nice, good, strong shape on there. So I wouldn't be afraid of that, but when you're doing it, kind of hold it where where you're rubbing like don't have your hands far apart where it could be waffling a little hold right where you are and kind of go maybe in the same direction and that'll help alleviate um, excess transfer okay so let's see where we are right so let's start in the center needle down we've got our pretension already done would i test my threads yes i would i pretty much always do i always have a little scrap of something of different battings. I have a little basket right where I'm working and I tend to go ahead and test those pretty much with every quilt because I don't want anything happening. So for my design, I'm gonna kind of ignore this. Um, if you feel like you have trouble with designs that are kind of messy and not giving you what you want, you can cover up the part that you wanna preserve, right? Like we don't want this part, cover up what you wanna save and you can take your little thing like this and just get some of the excess off of there. Like if you're getting confused, okay? So let's do this other side. So this one, because it's curvy, it'd be hard for me to get everything off, but you can see I can get a little bit of fewer lines so that I'm not quite as distracted by all the lines that are hanging out over there, right? Because there could be too many. So I'll just clean it up a little bit, right? And I do that a lot of times with my grids when the grids are, I want like just this box, but the grid goes everywhere. That way I can make sure I can not have so much lines because then you, you kind of sew outside your grid, right? Which I hate. Okay, so let's go ahead. So we're gonna follow the line and curve around. And then I'll just follow this. This is tracking back over my existing line okay and just coming into the center and not further and then back up to the top and then here we'll do the little heart and because I think it'll look better I'm gonna go reverse I'm gonna go like this okay and then I'm gonna come back down so I'm right at the center of the heart I don't like to go that way I think that for me, I find that my heart does not look as pretty when I go from this direction down to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna close this design down through the center like this. Close those two sections. And then just like we did before, we'll go this way, over the top, and back down, and then right over the top. just like we did before. Connect with the existing line, and then right there, right into that. And if you wanna put an extra line in there, you can. Okay, and now we're done. So this would be where you would connect if you were going one side to the other, but we decided that we're not doing that, we're just doing the one. So we'll just tack it and cut it. Now, I think it looks always very messy when there's chalk. I think that um, it's very, very tempting to try to get those lines off right away, right? But just wait until you're all done. If you need a peek to see how you're doing, you could just flip it over and look at it that way. And then you're like, oh, okay, it's good. Looks fine. A little bit wonky, huh? Turn it, turn it straight. So I gotta make sure that um, when I come back, I connect that a little curvier, but still, Put about 10 more of those on and nobody will notice that, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that is 1030. Um, so hopefully you felt like there were a few things that you learned today. So we did freezer paper templating, which was the little template that we made. And then we sewed it out. And again, you can continue doing that for the whole length. I, if I knew that my quilt had like a 53 and a quarter inch border, I could tape pieces together and I could make this really, really long and I can fold them based on what I needed on the quilt. 
And then if the pieces did not touch, like if one section of the design did not touch, I could just pencil in lines and make them a little bit bigger so that when I opened it, they all connected and that's how you could make it fit your border just perfectly. Okay, all right, hi Miss Tammy. I saw some stuff you made recently, it looks amazing. <laughs> I love seeing what you guys do, so definitely always share your work with me because I'm so nosy, I wanna see what you're doing. All right. Anyway, hopefully um, next week, Free Motion Fridays will not be available because I will be traveling and I will be teaching in Kennewick, Washington for Sandy's Fabric and Sewing Machines. So if you um, are interested in that, they have a lot of great stuff available coming up. So many different uh, brands and products that are going to be shown. Many of their classes are free for their anniversary events. So definitely check that out. It's a customer appreciation event if you're in that area. So I will not be on next Friday, and then I'll be back after that. But I do have another trip this week, so it's going to be this month, so it's going to be a little bit hairy scary. I'll always post a note if I'm going to not be available, and I'll leave it pinned at the top so you can just check on Fabricated Quilts to see if there will be a Free Motion Fridays or not. I will be teaching on my long arm for So Steady this weekend. And then next weekend, I might have a taped segment. I will not be live, I think. I think I will not be live. I might be. I don't know. I might be back because I'm coming back on Saturday, so it's possible. All right, just keep checking. I will definitely post everything on my uh, calendar. I'm putting my calendar items on my fabricated quilts calendar as well. It'll literally show the dates that I'm teaching, and so I'll try to keep that updated for everybody so it makes it easy for you to find all that information in one place. All right, have a great week, and maybe I'll see you on Sunday. Happy quilting, you guys.